Ladies and gentlemen, we will have now a presentation of our partner organization, uh, Sasakawa Foundation, and the presentation will be um, made by uh, Madam Naomi Konda, please. Thank you for your kind introduction. And first of all, let me express our appreciation to Kasumi Plasky Foundation. And thank you, thanks to, to everyone for joining us. I'm Naomi Konda, research fellow of the Sasakawa Peace Foundation. The Sasakawa Peace Foundation started this research project, Balance It of US Allies, from this April, in cooperation with Kasumi Plasky Foundation. This presentation focuses on our goal and provisional conclusion of our project. In Europe and Asia, US allies are facing similar threats, namely the emergencies of two religious states. In Europe, NATO, NATO members are encountering Russian aggressiveness to expand its territory and sphere of influence at the Allies' eastern flank. NATO was quick to enhance its deter defense and deterrence posture at its eastern flank in order to respond to the new environment. Still, Russia raised tension by showing its uh, force and continuing intervention in Ukraine. In Asia, Japan and other, Ch other US allies have been facing Chinese expansion. Since 2010, China has begun to show its ambition in East China Sea, South China Sea, and even the Pacific Ocean, and has heightened tension by coercive use of parametric means. In addition, it is likely that the U.S. will demand its allies to share ever greater portion of defense burden in the future. Under such circumstances, U.S. allies need to consider ways to manage uh, their alliance with the United States while minimizing the increase, uh, increase of their military role and defense expenditure. Still, providing an adequate contribution from the U.S. perspective. For the Allies to determine the contribution that they make, uh, that they need to make, it, it is essential to underline the full spectrum of assets and liabilities. Through this process, a systemic appreciation can be drawn up. For this purpose, we employed balance it framework as analogy to make qualitative analysis of assets and liabilities of U.S. allies' contribution. Assets here indicate strong points and capability through which allies contribute to the whole alliance. Liabilities means weak points in each ally's ability to contribute to the alliance preparation or operations. So this project is a comparative study of allies' con current contribution in Asia and in Europe. In this project, six, pro six allies, Japan, Taiwan, though it's an informal ally, Australia, Poland, Lithuania, and Germany have been selected in order to make a contrast between Asia and Europe facilitating a cross-regional uh, comparative analysis. These states were selected in order to evaluate the characteristic of contribution of allies and organize geographically on the basis of proximity to the threat. In order to compile a current balance sheet, The key questions for this study are as follows. What is the relative strategic importance of each ally to the U.S.? What role does the U.S. expect each ally to play, and what burden should it bear? 
What kind of contribution does each ally make at present to the U.S.-led alliance in order to maintain the alliance? What are the gaps between U.S. expectation and the actual contribution of allies at present? Lastly, what is the nature of degree of cooperation with other allies in their, in their respective region? Through this brief analysis of the present balance sheet of six U.S. allies, we, we reach the following provisional conclusions. First, Shared perception of threat are essential to maintain good relations with the U.S. and make valuable contribution to the alliance. If ally has different perception of threat from the U.S. or within alliance, it is difficult to you, for U.S. allies to make significant contribution to the alliance, therefore foregoing an important asset. For example, among six allies investigated, Japan and Poland share the perception of threat and their role to play in the region. In Asia, Japan is now trying to expand its contribution as the regional half of U.S. alliance network in Asia to support U.S. operation and work with the U.S. for regional security, which meets U.S. expectations. However, constitutional limitation of the on the use of force would be the restraint for playing ex expected role further in the region. In Europe, Poland is now seeking to position itself to support the U.S. for the defense of Central and Eastern Europe as the biggest country of the region and to play a vital role as new backbone of U.S. presence in NATO's eastern flank. However, the drawn-out process of armed forces modernization is impeding its immediate ability to respond to U.S. expectations. On the other hand, there are discrepancies in perception of threat and priority between the U.S. and Australia and Germany. Australia feels a lesser intensity of Chinese threat since it is distanced from China and potential conflict zone in East Asia and also has deep economic ties with the PRC. Hence, it is reluctant to become entangled in a crisis between Taiwan and China or other contingencies in Northeast Asia and un unwilling to provoke China unnecessarily. Germany's relationship with the United States is now deteriorating since they have different approaches to international security and different security goals, including con conflicting position towards Russia. Therefore, Germany is ambivalent about increasing its alliance contribution, although it still accepts large U.S. troops deployment on its soil. Second, the role of U.S. allies vary in their geopolitical position. The, the geopolitical position can become their asset or liability depending on their capability to play their role in the regional defense. The basic role of frontline state is to provide an infrastructure for rapid re deployment for allied force. Lithuania's geopolitical position is a liability since it is located at the front and very vulnerable to Russian aggression or incursion. However, it is strategically important since it is a gateway to Central and Western Europe. Hence, it, if it could play a role as a wall to stop Russia, and as a bridge to link Central Europe and Baltic states, its location and vulnerability could be turned into its asset. Taiwan is strategically significant since it is located at the center of the first island chain to contain Chinese expansion to the Pacific Ocean, while it is subject to strong pressure from China. So its geopolitical location is an asset and liability at the same time. However, Taiwan does not have 
formal relation with the U.S. and U.S. allies in Asia, it is difficult to implement formal defense cooperation. The role of second-tier state is to improve preparedness in anticipation of possible de deployment to frontline state and become the regional hub of re allied defense in contingencies. As mentioned earlier, Japan and Poland are willing to serve as the hub of regional defense and support U.S. deployment to the region, hence their geopolitical location are asset. The role of the state in the rear is to support the U.S. and other allies for allied defense. They are distant from potential threat and can assist their allies from safe zone, which is an asset. However, since they are geographically insulated from threat, they tend to have different perceptions of threat from the U.S. And be, and be reluctant to get involved in the crisis, which is a liability. Third, to strengthen regional security, cooperation among U.S. allies and shared understanding of their role is essential is in addition to sharing perception of threat with the U.S. Also, promoting role sharing and burden sharing among U.S. allies based on shared understanding is necessary. In this context, the situation is in Asia is more severe than Europe. In Europe, NATO itself is a multilateral cooperation, and other multilateral cooperation and bilateral cooperation among U.S. allies have evolved as Nordic Baltic cooperation and northern groups. However, further contribution and commitment of Germany is critical for Lithuania and Poland to defend the eastern flank. Deepening regional dialogue and cooperation is therefore desirable. The U.S. alliance network in Asia is based upon the help and spokes system, and cooperation and coordination among U.S. allies requ requires further integration. However, as Japan and Australia are ex expected to support U.S. operation in crisis in Taiwan Strait or Korean Peninsula, the cooperation and coordination among U.S. allies are seen as essential to deter Chinese expansion and North Korean belligerence. Therefore, it is necessary to promote strategic dialogue and improve framework for cooperation among allies in Asia. It is necessary to note that the most pressing Im immediate problem for alliance management is the current administration of President Trump. Radically destabilizing policy has emerged under, under umbrella of America First policy, including questioning the value of its alliances. What is clear for U the U.S. US allies is their contribution will be scrutinized if it is regarded as free riding on American security guarantee. However, the U.S. is the security provider as long as the U.S. continue to engage in global issues and allies, and its allies, especially Taiwan, Lithuania, Japan, and Poland, need U.S. commitment for their security. Therefore, for now, the most difficult task they are facing is to maintain good relations with the U.S., though Australia and Germany especially are frustrated by the U.S. foreign policy. It is very difficult to imagine that Trump could destroy the U.S. worldwide network. Hence, allies need to increase their asset and make efforts to reduce their liabilities. This study may provide each ally with an indication of how it can overcome its liabilities and employ its asset effectively in order to keep a good relationship with the U.S. Thank you for listening. Thank you.